new around here, my name is Jack, and I do all sorts of videos that I find interesting. But for this video, let's talk about the learnings that I had for the first half of 2021 in the Philippine stock market that made me profitable. And then let's talk about the opportunities that lies ahead before the year ends. So let's begin. I've been trading the market since 2018 and every year there's a market theme or market narrative that drives the market to go up, down, or sideways. For 2018, it's inflation that drives the market to go down. For 2019, it's US-China trade war that, makes the, that made the market to go on sideways. For 2020, obviously, it's COVID. For 2021, it's supposed to be a COVID recovery year theme, but unfortunately, medyo delay tayo compared to China, to US, and EU. Okay, so what have we seen so far? So for the first half of the year, so from um, January until May, we, we are in a downbeat, non-trending market environment. So what causes that correction? So the first reason is yung temporary uh, profit taking from the strong rally last Q, Q4 of 2020. So it's it's normal, di ba, na nagka-profit take. So that's why that's the reason why medyo uh, nag-slow down yung uptrend nung first quarter nung, nung taon. But what pushes, what really pushes the correction is yung second lockdown that we had somewhere in April. So kung iisipin mo at kung titingnan mo, di ba, from, from ano nga, January until May. So that's five months of a downbeat, non-trending market environment again. And then from June to first week of July, that's the only time that we had a market trending environment. So actually, nag-start nga yung rally nung, ano, nung last four trading days to May. And from July, second week up until today, Day, we are back in a non-trending environment. So basically, kung titignan mo at iisipin mo, for the past 7 months, we only have 1 month na trending yung market environment. So during these kinds of situation, dapat mabilis yung profit taking mo. Okay, what have I learned so far this year? So let me read the quote from Mark Minerbini that encapsulates my first lesson of the year. So ito yun. Um, Never get bold when trades are running cold. So, ano bang ibig sabihin ito? So, basically, it just means that when you notice that um, the market is losing momentum, so pagka bumili ka ng stock, price, ng stock and then yung, from the price point that you bought it, hindi siya tumataas. Or kaya naman, pagka nagsisimula na mahit yung mga cut loss points mo from your previous trades, it just simply means na nawawala na ng momentum yung market. So, what you need to do pagka ganda na yung nangyayari? Uh, you have three options para sa akin. Una, you could, you could still trade, pero kailangan mo nang bawasan na yung, yung number of trades that you are taking. Or kaya naman, um, simulan mo na liitan yung, yung, ano mo, yung portfolio allocation mo in your trades. Or number three, better yet, huwag ka muna mag-trade. Cash is still a good position in these kinds of market environment. Okay, for the first month of the year, I lost a lot of the profit I made from the strong rally of Q4 2020. And it's a consequence of getting bold when trades are running cold. So, ano ba yun yung yari? So, basically, I was still buying uh, stock positions when when nararamdaman ko na, na wala nang follow through yung mga stock na pinibili ko. So, from the price point where I bought it, hindi na siya tumatas and it's already a sign of market weakness. And pagkaganti yung yari na bumibili ka pa, you're, 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 uh, you're increasing yung portfolio allocation mo. And when the when the stock goes down, mas malaki yung talo mo kasi dumalaki yung ano yung value at risk mo pag nilalaki mo yung portfolio allocation mo eh. So the bigger yung position mo, the, the, the bigger din yung pwede mong matalo. So basically, what happened is bumaliktad na nga yung momentum. So the stock price goes down. So yun nga, uh, I, I lost a lot of the profit I made no Q4 of 2020. And I'm still holding a stock from that time and that's 300 shares of MLL kasi hindi ko na siya mabenta kasi nagbago yung port lot niya. But that is also a good reminder para sa akin and para sa inyo na if you don't cut your losses and imagine, di ba? I already cut my, my losses from that time. So, lumit na lang yung So, 300 shares na lang yung natira. Pero at that time, siguro mga 2,000 something pa yon So, 2,000 something pa yung, yung shares ko. So, I already sold 2,000 uh, 2, shares. Pero pag titinan mo siya, I'm, I'm down more than 20%. And imagine, if hindi ko, hindi ako nag-cut ng losses ko, imagine, mas malala siguro yung situation ko ngayon kasi ipit na ipit ako at mas malaki yung position size na natalo ko. So, that's a good lesson talaga na pagka, may, alam mo yun, na-hit na talaga yung cut loss mo, ikat mo na and don't wait na maipit ka sa ganitong sitwasyon, ba? My second learning for this year is finding a trading style that suits my lifestyle and that is position trading. There are different styles of trading. There's uh, momentum trading, position trading, swing trading, speculative trading, um, 
and iba't iba pa. Just, just research other trading styles if you're not aware of them. What I like about position trading is that I don't need to watch the whole market hour. So from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Hindi ko siya kailangan panoorin sa whole trading hour. So actually, ginagawa ko nga lang is just I just watch yung first 15 minutes of trading. So from 9.30 to 9.45 a.m. That's the only time that I watch the market. And then after that, I already exercise or kind of I play Dota 2 with my friends. Okay, what I do right now is I just place good deal cancel order. So depending on your broker, pwede good deal month yan or GTC yan for 60 days. So I just place yung buy order ko at a very, very low price sa mga stocks na gusto kong bilhin. And eventually, tatamaan naman yan kasi we are in a downtrending environment or non-trending environment, di ba? So yun, so basically I'm just accumulating yung mga, yung mga stocks na gusto ko. And then hopefully eventually, di ba, mag magte take profit na lang ako pagka umakit na ulit yung pagka bumalik na ulit yung momentum or yung rally. My third lesson for the year is taking profit. So most of my gains comes from Jollibee, Ayala Core, and GT Cap. And I was accumulating these issues from April until May. Then binenta ko yung mga yung shares ko nito from June to July. And ang kalabang mo sa pagte take profit is yung mentality na tataas pa yan. Wag ka muna ibenta. And that is a bad mentality. Uh, I, I suggest, pagka na-reach na yung take profit levels mo, you start selling some of your positions. Hindi naman kailangan lahat. Pero at least sell some para just to be sure na meron kang profit. Kasi it's always better to sell at a gain than at a loss. Buti na lang this time, hindi ko na binalik sa market yung profit that I made. And it's because it's a lesson that I learned earlier, earlier this year. And pagka nakakita ka na talaga ng sign ng market weakness, medyo mag-unload ka na. Not necessarily benta mo lahat, pero mag-unload ka na. Start selling some of your positions. And pag titignan mo kasi, um, if you look at GTCAP and Ayala Core, tumaas siya. But it doesn't reach yung previous highs niya. So, alam mo yung parang hindi pa talaga yung, ano, yung TP levels na masaya ko eh. Pero since naka, nakaramdam na ako ng market weakness, I start selling some my positions. And then pag na-confirm na yung bias ko na, ay, ito na talaga yun. Parang it, it's a start of a downtrend. I already sold most of, all, all, hindi, almost all of my positions. Last lesson that I would like to share is market meta changes. So, ano bang ibig sabihin nito? So, if you observe yung trending stocks no Q4 of 2020, so uh, one of yung mga strongest issues are Merrimart, um, Dito, Premier Horizon. Pero during that last rally no June 2021, hindi mo siya makikita na kasama sa mga trending stocks. Eh. So, nagbabago-bago talaga. So, hindi na sila kasama sa mga trending stocks. At ano na ba yung mga trending stocks last time? So, uh, andyan na yung Semirara, yung ACN, Converge, CNPF, ICT, uh, Ayala Land Logistics. So, yung, yung mga dating malakas, yung Merrimart, yung Premier Horizon, yung dito, nasupot na sila this time. So, nagbabago-bago yung mga trending na stocks. Even blue chips are tradable right now. I remember back in 2018, 2019, Hindi binibili ng mga retail traders yung blue chips kasi hindi naman gumagalaw, walang volatility, walang movement. Pero the pandemic made them tradable para sa akin. Na. And I think uh, a lot of traders are not yet parang seeing the, the opportunities of blue chips. Kasi ngayon, ha, I, I could personally uh, attest to this kasi ako, I made 10 to 15% from, from blue chips dito sa, sa mga dips nitong, nitong pandemic rallies. Eh. So, I could easily say na if you pick the strongest blue chips, you could easily make 10 to 15% from them. So, blue chips are tradable in this kind of market environment and pwedeng magbago yan. So, ayun nga, yun yung, yung, yung ibig kong pinapoint out ko na market meta changes. So, ayun lang, those are the lessons that made me profitable last rally ng June. And I suggest, due to the recent lockdown that we had, yung third lockdown na, that we have another market correction. So, beware of the, the strong issues like yung DNS, NPF, Semirara, ICT, Mondmisen, uh, IL Land Logistics, Converge, ACN. Yan, yung mga malalakas talaga. Uh, be sure to, take, to, to use this as an opportunity to enter uh, pagka nagkaroon ng retest or consolidation kasi most of the time naman, uh, during fourth quarter of every year, we usually have a strong rally. Uh. Again, a strong rally in Q4 is not definite pero I hope it happens as it usually does. And I hope if you're trading, you're profitable and Please, please, please don't hold losing positions. So, yun lang. Peace out. Bye!